everybody. It's Georgia Rose, and I am in the soul space, Zenkuda soul space. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for all tuning in. What a week it has been. I got to say, man, I really wasn't expecting all of the activity that happened to happen, but it did. And if you remember, on last week's show, I said, I predicted, I said, right around the convention, something's going to happen with Mr. Old Trumpy, and boy, did it. So welcome to the Zincuda Soul Space. Uh, this is the place where we talk a lot of metaphysical. We talk a lot of evolutionary astrology. I study charts and we also do tarot and have spiritual guests. So if you are looking to get in touch with your own soul space, you're in the right place. So uh, welcome. So uh, if you have not yet, please share the show. Tonight is all about you. Tonight is viewer special, viewer appreciation night. So tonight we're going to pull cards for whoever is in the audience. If you want to call in or comment live, you can do that. We'll have the phone number up on the screen in a little bit. And if you like anything that I say and you want a private reading, you can do that at zencuda.com. And also you can find me on social media, on Facebook at Zencuda Soul Space and on Instagram at Zencuda Official. So that's all my deets. So hopefully you'll slide into some of them and uh, see what I have to offer over there for readings and all kinds of things. Also going to have some online classes soon, all kinds of good stuff. So we're just going to look at my own comments. Let's see who's in the soul space tonight. Last week I had a problem with my comments, but I don't think I will this week. There's always a little bit of a delay, so. So this week, this weekend, I have to say, I really didn't do very much. I saw a couple of friends and I did a little bit around the house, but I used it to really kind of regroup. Um, as I had predicted last week, I said, listen, it's a good weekend to lay low. And it was. And then, of course, we had Saturday, the assassination attempt on uh, Donald Trump. And I talked a lot about the astrology. We did Donald Trump's chart on the show, and I also did uh, Joe Biden. Those two videos are up on my Zencuda YouTube site. So if you haven't seen them, you can check them out there. And what I will tell you is um, those videos are really getting a lot of play. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the support. Uh, the Donald Trump video is up to almost eight or 9,000 views. So that's really pretty cool. And I hope we'll have a whole lot of new people in the soul space every week with us and build our community that way. So I'm going to just say welcome, everybody, and put a little comment in here. And then I just want to talk a little bit about the astrology. And then we'll go to cards because there's a full moon in Capricorn coming up this week on the 21st. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I don't know why I have such a hard time getting my comments on lately. No, I need a new tutorial on this. Last week I had the same trouble. Here they are. Okay, great. So I got to say hello to Monica and Cheryl. Cheryl's such a great faithful watcher. And Sarah, Monica, um, Barbara is here. Welcome, Barbara. I think you might be a new person to our soul space. And Anita's on and Marianne. So I know you guys want cards tonight, so I'm just going to delve into the astrology a little bit because there are some important things going on. So with the astrology um, for this week, we have a full moon coming in in Capricorn. And for those of you who remember, um, who watched the show faithfully, in the beginning of the month, we had a full moon in Capricorn. And I said that we're going to be really playing a lot of Capricorn themes because we have two full moons um, in the same month in the same sign. And what does that mean? Well, it's called a blue moon because it's so rare. It only happens usually maybe once or twice a year, if that. And so the Capricorn energy that we're going to see kind of cycling around is very much to do with Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto was in Capricorn since 2008. Just in January of this year, started to egress into Aquarius. And then it went retrograde about six weeks ago. So now it's headed back for Capricorn. And that's a really big deal because there's a lot of things happening with this full moon that tie in with the energy that's just occurring this week. Um, the full moon is on the 21st. It is at, uh, let me just look at my notes here. I'm sorry, I'm looking down. Um, the full moon is, da, 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 I have it right here. The full moon is in Capricorn at 29 degrees, which is the last degrees of a sign, which in astrology we call the anoretic degree. Now, the anoretic degree of a sign is very, very potent and very important. And I'm going to tell you why this full moon is so important and why the energy between now and November, I know in the United States of America where I live, November is very important as we're electing a new leader, but this, this is the energy that's going to be in play. So we've had Pluto 
in Capricorn since 2008. And I've talked a lot about the show, a lot on the show about that and the fact that that was an energy that really dismantled and brought down a lot of structures in our world, not just here in the United States where I live, but globally, right? In the last few weeks, especially, we've seen France have a power change, the UK, lots of things going on globally with leadership and a new world order. This has been in place specifically since 2008, but very, very much so since 2020. And the last four years, we've seen all kinds of government structures and all kinds of things come in that are um, disintegrating. They're, they're, they're deteriorating. They're dying in order to make way for something new. So when we have Pluto going back now to those last degrees of Capricorn, that means that whatever was occurring since 2008 in the collective consciousness in the world is now going to be coming to a culmination and also in our personal lives. But what it also means, because this is the final time that Pluto is going to be in those last degree of Capricorn, where we have a full moon for the second time in a row in the last 30 days in that sign. So what does that really mean? Well, it means that it's a culmination of all the Capricornian energy. It's a culmination of what the archetype of Pluto is, which is something needs to die to be transformed. Out in the collective structures, Capricorn is an energy of structure, stability. It is the um, framework and the conditioning, the belief systems kind of in certain ways as far as the consensus belief system, like the structures, the laws of the land that we have in place. And when we have Pluto there, which we've had since 2008, that's the deterioration, the decline, the the, um, crumbling of those things. And it happens in order to make them new. So now in November, Pluto starts to go into Aquarius, which is the future, which is where we really start to now construct everything that's been destructed. And the fact that this full moon is there really heightens it because now we have a full moon on that 29th degree with Pluto approaching that 29th degree in Capricorn for the last time. Pluto will not be at this degree of Capricorn for another 246 years. So this is a culmination of a 240 degree 40 a 200 this is a culmination of a 240 year cycle. Now what happened 240 years ago? Well, that's when America was first birthed. So this is the culmination of that energy. And that's why it was not lost on me and many other people that iconic image that the uh, media was showing of Trump with his fist raised and the American flag behind him and the, the secret service huddled on him. It looked like something out of the revolution right? It looked like something out of 1776. And so it's because what happens above is so below, you know, what's happening in the sky with the planets and the stars is what is happening here in our world in the three dimension in in earth. So the energy transforms and transmutes. And that's the lesson for us right now. Pluto in the last degrees of Capricorn with the full moon at Capricorn, ending a 240 year cycle This is the energy that we're going to be in between now and November. It's going to be really interesting to watch. We also have, as I talked a lot about on my show last week, and also there's some videos on YouTube about the Mars-Uranus conjunction, which is exacting today at 26 degrees of Taurus. That is the energy that really was embodied and exemplified and heightened this weekend when that assassination attempt happen. It's rebellion, it's revolution, it's sudden shocking things. But all of this stuff, all the crumbling of the old and the in with the new, which we're going to start to see, especially in 2025, is not happening to punish us or to make us go into deprivation or detriment. This is all happening as a natural evolution of humankind, of, of our global life across earth, a natural reinvention re-establishing rebellion revolution what is a revolution a revolution doesn't mean everyone takes up arms and something changes the definition of a revolution is a circle it revolves what revolves how do we evolve that's revolution so we're coming back to the same place in the zodiac where our country was birthed we're in our pluto return and this is why now we see so many parallels between how this company was birthed and how where we are now democracy is at stake and all these things the media is saying and while i don't have any political opinion on this show nor in the media i will tell you that this is so that we can come back and redo something better 
And I've been saying to my personal friends and family since 2020 that um, when we had the great conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus and Pluto in Capricorn in um, December of 2020, I said to everyone, this is a seeding moment of a new world order. And that is what this is. And now we're starting to go into the culmination phase of a new world order. So it'll be really interesting to watch. We may not have democracy in the United States in the future. We may have a, a government that no one's ever thought of before, or we may go into a government from the past. But I will guarantee you one thing, and that is this, as sure as I am sitting here. When we look back four years, five years, six years from now, nothing will be the same. Nothing will go back. Nothing will be as it was. This is a new world order. So now let's drill that down to our own personal experiences. So that's out in the collective, and that is also why things seem so heightened. We're in a pressure cooker right now of energy globally, not just where I live, but everywhere. You can feel the gears grinding. You can feel people standing still in this fixed energy and wanting everything to stay the same or bring it back the way it was when we were comfy and cozy. And then you have this beautiful new guard that's just like, no, no, we can build it better. It should be different. And so you've got all of this fixed energy, and it's like a pressure cooker. So how do we interpret this in our own lives? Well, it's the end of a time in the world, 246-year cycle. And when Mars and Uranus come together, especially in a sign like Taurus, this is world leadership changing. This is stability being tested. This is financial markets. This is what we think of stability and self-preservation and currency. It's all going to change. It's going to flip over. It's like the script gets flipped. It can also be a signature of power back to the people. So really interesting, interesting time. So now drilling this down to our personal lives. So fear. Got to talk about fear in this because this is why everyone's so fixed and dug in. Because whether you have a progressive, futuristic kind of mindset or whether you have a traditional looking towards the, the, the past to show you where you want to go in your life, whatever polarization you're in, and I'm not talking politically, I'm just talking about us in our own lifestyle, you know, some of us want to go back to our childhood and regress, and some of us want to move forward. So that creates fear because we're afraid we're going to be pushed in the opposite direction. I want my blankie. I want to stay home. I want to, I want to you know, call, go home and close the doors and not look at anything, and somebody's going to drag me outside. I want to go out in the world and see all beautiful new things and, and really create my future, but someone's going to make me stay home. We fear the opposite of what we really desire, and we fear the unknown. So there's a lot of fear in the world right now. And there's also a lot of global leaders across the globe. And when I say global leaders, I don't just mean politically. It can be religious. It can be um, traditions of culture. It can be all kinds of leadership, a, a community. But the global leaders in your own life and in your own world are frightened right now because they know that things are changing. We're in a pressure cooker. You know, religions are changing, belief systems are changing, sexuality is changing. So it's very hard to hold on to what makes us safe. So we have this huge, huge energy and inertia of fear. And I would be remiss as a light worker and remiss as a host of a show called Soul Space if I didn't talk about that a little bit. So let me talk about that. So don't give your power away. What people don't understand about fear is that most of the time fear is false. We're afraid of something that's either never going to happen or might happen. And now we're robbing ourselves of a moment where it hasn't occurred yet, right? Where we could be happy in. So I know there's all these acronyms for fear, you know, false information appearing real, all kinds of things like that. But the way to get out of a fearful place, whether it's anxiety or you're fearing something that's about to happen or whatever your fear might be, is to take back your power and stop focusing. And, you know, I use the word worship a lot because if we get up in the morning, first thing we think about, last thing we think about when our head hits the pillow, things that keep entering into are intrusively into our minds all day long. Those are the things we're worshiping because we're, we're allowing them to control our thoughts. So we're worshiping them. So the things that you're worshiping when you're fearful are the things you don't want in your life. So I hear a lot of talk about manifestation. It's a buzzword out there in the collective right now. I'm going to manifest. I'm going to manifest. You can't manifest if you're in fear because fear will control you and you have to control fear. So here's how you do that. This one simple phrase. Anytime you hear something in the media or someone wants to bring your head down, maybe it's somebody who's competitive with you at work or a family member, this is what you say. 
Is it true? Is it true? It's that simple. Is this true? Someone's telling you you can't do something. Someone's telling you what you should be afraid of. You can't go outside. It's raining. Is that true? No, it's not. I can go outside even though it's raining. You know. Um, whatever it could be. Name a fear in the comments. Just ask yourself, is it true? Usually that simple phrase is going to unravel the anxiety and the fear. You know, I'm not worthy. I have nothing good to say. Oh, I didn't prepare well. Oh, um, nobody's going to listen to me. Oh, I always get dismissed. Oh, no one cares about me. No one loves me. Oh, um, I don't have enough money for that. Oh, there's no way I could do something like that. Is it true? Probably not. So it's the same thing when the media starts to tell you things. You should be afraid. I heard a commercial on the radio on the way over here, and it said, um, if you don't have a solar-powered generator and emergency food supply, then you're going to be in trouble. And I thought to myself, is that true? I don't think so. I mean, I think I'm pretty okay. I don't think those are a necessity. It might be good preparation even for just for a storm or something. Might not be a bad idea. But it's not true that I'm going to be like devastating in a place if I don't have those things. Not right now in my world anyway. So we have to not give in to that fear. And that's going to be very heightened, especially in the next few months especially the last quarter, going into the third and last quarter of 2024, you're going to see a lot of fear heightened. And that's why I'm telling you to practice self-mastery because that's what the Capricorn energy with Pluto, this full moon coming in, in there is all about. It is self-mastery. And just like you ask, is it true? What that simple exercise of asking, is it true, does is it switches your focus from the collective from the media, from an external power that's telling you something, right? As soon as you ask yourself, is this true? Now you're inward and you're taking back your power. Because whatever you heard or saw that caused that immediate reactive fear response is from an environment or from something you heard or saw or smelled or tasted or felt. It's external. When you bring it in and you say, is this true? You're going into your own authority from the inside out. And that's how we have to live in the next three months, next four months, next five months, until we're in Aquarian energy where we can really go forward. We have to live from the inside out. And there's a whole lot of people in the world living from the outside in. And that's where you're going to have an issue. You're going to start to feel ungrounded. You're going to start to feel confused. Things are going to be murky. Your goals and living your best potential life is going to seem a lot more hard to reach. But when you live from the inside out, it changes. And a perfect example of that was, um, and this again is not political, but I felt that Melania Trump and the things that she said after her husband was almost assassinated were extremely beautiful from a spiritual point of view. If you haven't heard them, just go back and listen because it was so not political and it was just a beautiful spiritual uh, way. And I think that as I had said last week on the show with the Mars-Uranus conjunction, it's all about transformation. And we're seeing now a kinder, softer compassion rise. And we're seeing people take things a little more seriously. And maybe the arrows won't get slung so, so violently. And that's the real, real power of Uranus. People fear Uranus. Again, people say, oh, it's something sudden, shocking, something terrible is going to happen. Is that true? Well, something's going to happen, but it's for transformation. Because Uranus wants to bring what's unconscious to the conscious. It wants to bring us into a transformation. Pluto is the same. Pluto is something has to die to be transformed, out with the old and in with the new. So while you're asking yourself to step out of fear by simply saying, is my fear true? Is this true? And you're switching things up to be living from the inside out instead of the outside in. Make your goals. Make your plan. Really think about what your true desires are. Pluto is our desires. And think about what do I really want my life to look like in the next couple of years, in the next 10 years, in the next five years. That old, you know, cliche about where do I want to be five years from now? Where do I want to be um, in three years? That is the energy that we really got to get in right now. So, um, yeah, so I, we predicted a lot of things on last week's show and a lot of them happened. And this is what I'm going to go out on a limb now and say the Uranus Mars conjunction is exact today. 
I think we have a few more bumps coming up. I think don't be surprised that there are some surprises. What are they? I have no idea because they're unexpected and I can't predict completely unexpected things. I can just predict for you that something unexpected is going to happen. I think something is going to, unexpected is going to happen with Joe Biden in the next couple of months, if not sooner. And I also think there's going to be some shocking surprises. Nothing may be bad. It doesn't have to be bad at the convention that's happening this week. So that's my little duty duty. So I'm going to look on the comments, going to start pulling cards because I know that's what you guys really, really want. And I'm looking for my comments. So let me see my comments, please. I don't know why my comments disappear, but they do. Sorry, guys. I got to see you to pull cards for you. It keeps going to a different thing. Mm-hmm. Talk amongst yourselves, please. Why is this not working for me? Okay, here we are. Okay. Somebody has to make a comment in order for me to see comments now. I don't know why that is. All right. Hey, Elaine, how are you doing? I've got um, Barbara on here also. So I talked to her before. Nice that she's first time on the show. Don't have a super lot of people on tonight, so maybe we will be able to get to the cards. I always drop off on viewers in the summer, so that's to be expected. So, okay, first one up, I've got Elaine on here. All right, so we're going to pull some cards for Elaine. And I know Elaine is a Pisces where... Um, Saturn and Neptune are so Saturn can be a little limiting but I will tell you I have felt very spacey the last couple of days because um, Neptune is also in the final degrees of Pisces we talked about that on the show last week it can make us a little spicy okay so I have the Knight of Cups upside down and I've got the Page of Swords right side up and the page of wands right set up. Well, you got a lot of men surrounding you, my lady. Okay, so Elaine, I've got the Knight of Cups in reverse. The Knight of Cups for me, and I know Elaine reads also. She's actually someone that I go to for readings. So the Knight of Cups in this spread upside down and the fact that it's the beginning is I feel like it's something being left behind. Um, and I know that's not the traditional uh, meaning of the Knight of Cups, but for some reason in this spread and the way it's laid out, I'm feeling like this is something left behind, a little bit bittersweet, a little bit emotional, but I also feel like there's so much um, moving forward abundance, that cup in the hand. It's just that he's facing in the opposite direction, which leaves me to believe you have to leave something behind in order to reap the rewards of what is new. So move forward. The next card that we have in this spread is the eight, uh, Page of Swords. The Page of Swords is always a um, communication. Pages bring news and messages. So I feel like this is something um, very material in the world. If you're waiting for some results of something or to hear news about something, the Page of Swords is going to bring it. It's a very much a business type of energy or an energy of opportunity in the real physical world. Um, for some reason, I don't know why. I'm going to pull a couple more cards because it's like when I say I don't know why, it means basically that... I'm getting an intuitive, very strong feeling, but that the cards are not showing it to me. It's just coming through to me psychically. I'll get to that in a second. The next thing I have is this King of Wands, um, I mean, Page of Wands. This is also an energy of message, but the Page of Wands brings new news. And usually the Page of Wands for me is a very benevolent and good news because you can see all of the growth on the staff and the newness of the leaves. So I'm going to pull another card for that energy that's coming in psychically for me because I feel like it's something medical and I have the King of Pentacles. So I know that your husband had had a health problem a while ago. I'm assuming everything is fine now, but this is showing me that there is maybe something there, nothing serious, just like it could even be like a cold or something, but just that you worry every time something happens or he's not 100%. And I'm going to pick another card for you. And there you go. Carrying burdens that don't belong or aren't really, you know, burdens that aren't really um, needed to be carried. So I would relax because I think that's what you have to let go of is worrying about the health. Um, let go of 
always like kind of, you know, putting somebody under a magnifying glass and making sure they're okay, they're okay, they're okay. I think everything is okay and you need to move away from that energy to reap the rewards that are coming to you in the future. Final card for me is the Fool card. You're going on a journey. It's right here with this um, uh, Knight of Cups. Maybe you are actually physically moving. I know that your home was up for sale. We talked about that. I don't know what your timeline was. Um, perhaps you're already, you know, uh, there now and actually doing your physical move or in your new place. But this shows me a, an actual physical journey that it's speaking to me about. Um, don't know if you're going to write anything in the comments, Elaine. Um, yeah, she worries. Yeah, and I can feel that. That's this card. You know that. All right. But I've got the King of Pentacles here that came up. And I have to tell you, he's coming with the Page of Wands, which is good news and stability for me. So I think you don't need to worry. You need to watch and be careful always. We want to take care of ourselves and our loved ones. But don't let that rob you of some beautiful times with um, with husbands. OK, just cherish every moment. And here's another Knight of Wands. All right. You've got all these knights. I think we have every one of the knights we could possibly have in the deck. So they're giving you this message, this beautiful message. And um, there you go. Sleepless nights. You don't have to worry. Don't worry. Stop your worrying. All right. So that is the, uh, the thing, Elaine. And you know, you can always call me and we'll, we'll go over some stuff privately. Okay. Um, next up, I have uh, Monica. Okay, going to pull a couple of cards for Monica. For some reason, they're telling me two cards for you tonight, Monica. Sending you hearts. Love you. I really, you know, I have to say, I am so beautifully um, overwhelmed and warmed in my heart because, oh, she is in South Carolina. So look up into the future, Elaine, not back. Okay, you got to look up into the future. All right. Um, love you so much. Sending you hearts up. Everybody send some beautiful warm, loving energy to Elaine tonight. It's always hard to leave a place you've been for a long time. I know I'm probably going to end up doing that in a little bit. So, okay. So we've got the queen of swords. This is for Monica. They're telling me to do two cards for you. Look at all this beautiful energy that's getting sent your way, Elaine. I don't know if you're watching or just listening, but you got this beautiful energy being sent your way. Um, so we've got the Queen of Swords and the Page of Swords. All swords for you, Monica. Swords are an energy of the physical world. There also could be a partnership in business or something to do with business. The Queen of Swords is Libra card. I know. I think you have a Libra moon. I don't know how I remember this stuff. Half the time I can't even remember people's names, but I'd be like, that's the one with the moon here. And then I remember your charts. Um so I know you have Libra energy somewhere in your chart. So this is talking about your Libra energy, the Queen of Swords. This is you. Page of Swords is, again, the pages are coming up in big force tonight. These are messages. The universe is talking. And you guys saw me shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. You too got the Fool card. Um, this is something about a spiritual journey for you. This is not a physical journey. I'm seeing this as a younger person in your life that you need to maybe set some boundaries with. Um, be that business bitch that you can be. Sorry to use that word. I don't mean it in a derogatory way, of course. I mean, like when something has to be done, you take care of it. And there's a situation here with a younger loved one that needs to have a little bit of discipline and some boundaries. Again, you guys, let me shuffle these cards. Carrying burdens that you shouldn't have to carry. And I know they told me to do only two cards, but I just felt like doing more. Um, yeah, so set your boundaries with whoever the young male is in your life. Somebody young male needs to have boundaries set. Okay. Um, next up is doo -doo -doo. Marianne Sabatino. I haven't talked to you in a while, Marianne. You see me shuffling. Everybody sees me. I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling. Um, for you, they're telling me to pick from the bottom of the deck, which I don't usually get, but they're telling me to do that. I'm going to cut the deck and shuffle more. You can see me shuffling. You can hear me shuffling. I'm going to cut this deck, and they're telling me to pick three cards from the bottom for you, Marianne. I got the Nine of Cups, the Five of Wands, and the Hangman. So this is telling me when cups are abundance, but this is upside down, which means that it could be an abundance situation that has already occurred in the past um, or occurred in the future. Now, when I get reversals, because I am a psychic reader, I always get a feeling of what it is. In this case, they're telling me this is in the past. Um, the Ten of Cups is a beautiful, abundant energy. Cups are emotion. It's our heart. It's our soul. So this is a situation that you had in your life that you still oftentimes think about and, and mourn and feel the loss of. There's one last battle that you need to uh, move from. 
and I believe that's grief. And the hangman um, in the reverse position that the hangman is in means that you're undecided about something. You're still holding on to the past. You've got one foot in the future and one foot in the past. And you've got to make the jump and bring both feet into the future. And this spread is really telling you that. And what I would say is this full moon is the time for you to make that jump, especially when we have planets in the anoretic last degrees of a sign and we have a planet culminating something that is not going to be in that energy for another 240 years. So in my book, that means do whatever you need to do, a meditation, a healing, a Reiki session. You need to move into your future because you've got one foot in the past, mourning and longing for a situation, a love, a a comfort that you had. Um, It's a fight for you to release it. But once you do that, you are going to be able to make your decision to move into the future. And I think things are going to be so much better for you. And you're going to feel so much of a release and liberation. Um, Next up is uh, Cheryl. And Cheryl, I'm going to pull some cards for you. Just trying to give them a really, really good shuffle. So put in the comments how your week went. How are you guys feeling? Like, did anything happen with over the weekend with, with you guys and some unexpected twists or plot twists? I always love to hear your stories. These are really shuffled. So I'm going to pull some cards for my Cheryl. King of Swords. Somebody said they... Oh, there were thunderstorms, Elaine. You can play it back um, on my Facebook page. When we end the show, it's always there, the replay. Um, It's probably going to be at about, um, I would say, look around 15, 16. I'm sorry. um, My clock is in reverse for my my schedule. Um, Look at like uh, 40 minutes into the show or a half hour into the show. Okay. Um, So this was for um, Cheryl. All right. Okay, so Cheryl, for you, I've got the uh, King of Swords. King of Swords? Yeah, the King of Swords. Swords are all over the place tonight. King of Swords is a businessman. He is someone that could be a partner in love or business, but he is a business type energy. He's like a no-nonsense person, a real like CEO boss kind of energy, a little bit controlling, but it's okay. And I see if this person is someone who's in your life now or coming into your life, this is a really happy union for you. So you're going to meet a gentleman who is extremely professional, um, could be someone in law also, or someone who is associated with a legal profession of some kind. And I'm telling you, you're either going to meet somebody or there's somebody already in your life that is absolutely a soulmate energy. It is, um, Coming to you. That is, this card is like one of my favorite cards in the deck. And then the Knight of Swords is, it happens very fast. This is like a romance or a romance you're already in that changes very quickly for the better. This is a really good energy. I, I think it's a partnership for you. So I'm curious to see how that turns out. And I believe we have a caller. Hello, welcome to the Soul Space. Hi, GR. It's Pauline. Hey, Pauline. <laughs> how are you? The line. If you want me to hang up, I will. Because I don't. <laughs> I did. I didn't come into the show in the beginning, so I just came in. So I don't really know what you requested. That's okay. I'm going to pull a couple of cards for you. Is that what you're looking for? Okay. Yeah. You want me to take it off the air? Just let listen. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull a couple of cards for you. You're welcome to stay on or come come off. Either way, I'll I'll be doing the cards. Okay. So I got Queen okay. of Pentacles for you. Queen of Pentacles is an energy that is an air sign, like an Aries woman. Um, And then I have this beautiful energy. This is also one of my favorite cards. It's the Two of Wands. The Two of Wands is an energy of looking out to the future in the world. So I feel like this could actually be you, uh, Queen of Pentacles. This is someone who's very grounded, like grounding in what she really wants and manifesting. So what I'm going to say to you, Pauline, is if anything... Yeah, look, I got the Page of Cups. So um, if you've been trying to manifest anything in your life, specifically with your future um, and future plan, Mm -hmm. really stay on track because this looks like it's really going to come together for you. Because I feel like this is a really strong energy. She's got the pentacle, which is coin, which is abundance. And then we've got looking out to the future and the page of cups bringing you, you know, your cup runneth over. This page of cups is also a Pisces energy. So just be aware that um, Pisces is an energy that, Um, maybe coming in somehow to do with, you know, what you are looking to accomplish. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I hope that resonates for you. Thanks for calling to the show. Next up, we're going to do, who have I got here? Um, We did Cheryl. I've got Sarah. 
Sarah Stacks. How are you doing, hon? Okay, so I'm going to shovel and sh shovel. I'm going to shuffle and I'm going to start to move on because I want to be able to give you guys uh, the cards. Okay. So, Sarah. Sarah, I've got the King of Swords again, and you saw me. I flipped these cards quite a bit. Um, Rebirth, Judgment, and the Empress. Baby, this is you. I feel like you've been having a lot of insights and a lot of transformation. Um, I have to say, the King of Swords, when it comes in for me, when I go into your energy, it's just, it's your dad. You know, just your dad, like patting you on the back, very proud of you. Just really feels like that. But this and this are the cards that are really super meaningful in this particular spread. Not that your dad is, and he's always around you. Um, this judgment card is rebirth, and this empress card is you. Uh, the empress in tarot is a very maternal figure, someone who's very protective and mothering and nurturing. But it's also an energy of spirituality. You can see on the musical instrument by her feet here, this is the sign of Venus. Venus is our values and our, um, the things we love in our life, the things that are important to us, family and meaningful things. And this is a spread that shows me that you're very connected with the other side and spirituality, uh, what I refer to as spirit, God, you know, whatever that energy is called for you. And this is showing me that you're having a new um, elevation, a new level of really understanding your own spirituality, your own belief system. And the Empress is really coming into a beautiful, um, almost like golden light you can see in the back that's surrounding you of a beautiful new place in your connection to your spirit and your own agency and authority. Like this is very deep, meaningful, spiritual connection with yourself. And it's beautiful to see. And, um, you know, take that with you because keep doing that. Keep, you know, living inward from the inside out because I really do feel like that's the energy and, and the universe is going to reward you for that. Next up, I have Barbara Vela. All right. Um, Barbara, I am shuffling. And I just had another. Will my son find and close on a house? If so, when? Well, let's see. Let's see if we can pull some cards for your son and if his house hunting is going to be good guys see me shuffling can hear me too okay i'm even going to cut these so let's see barbara spirit give us some cards for barbara's son well i've got the pentacle card which is the um eight of pentacles and eight of pentacles means hard work paying off literally you have the cobbler sitting at his bench and all the coin coming into his business so this is hard work pays off that's the classic tarot of that Queen of Cups, which I don't know your birth date, Barbara, but that could be you if you are being very instrumental in his home purchase. And we've got the three. This is celebration. This is, you know, preaching outside the church, someone who's guiding someone into an understanding of a type of um, belief system or showing them the way to do something. So I'm going to tell you, I think this is definitely saying he's going to get a house. Also, for some reason, in my mind, I'm seeing the number three and four. That could be, you know, three weeks, four weeks, something like that. It could be three months. But I'm seeing three and four. It could be house number with those in it. I don't know. But I feel pretty confident that he's definitely going to get a house. The hard work pays off. Leave no stone unturned. What I'm going to tell you is even go out and look at things that um, are maybe not what you would look at normally, like bro broaden the search. Because there's definitely a celebratory um, thing. And, and definitely that's you helping them get something. So that's what I'm seeing. So the answer is yes. Going to find a house. All right. Next up, I have Anita. Anita Mina. Anita also is another one like Sarah. Another uh, viewer like Sarah who's probably been with me, I would say, over 15 years. Um, and thank you so much for supporting my work. It makes it so much more meaningful to me that we can form a community. And my new website also is almost done. It was supposed to be done last week, but eh, we had some vacationing and some things going on. So um, when that rolls out, you guys are going to love it because you can do everything all in one place. There's a community page. There's online classes. There's uh, my blog, everything. It's going to be so, so awesome for us to really be able to uh, come together. A lot of projects coming. So this is for Anita. This can't be because you guys saw me shuffle these cards and I got the same card. Hard work paying off for you. Look at that. We've got the eight of pentacles and this is 
message is coming. This is offers coming in. So whatever you've been really working hard on, Anita, you're getting an offer. This is like literally the hand of God, like offering you a cup, like your cup runneth over. And then we've got the world is your oyster, the world. So this is balance. And this is also, you know, the material, the spiritual, the physical, the emotional world all coming together in a beautiful way. So whatever you were thinking about, you want an answer to on these cards, I'm going to tell you, really great thing coming to you. Hard work pays off. Something is offered to you and the world is at your feet, basically. Balance, balance, balance. Next up, I'm going to get um, some cards for, did Barbara, did Monica, did Anita, did Cheryl. I think I got, oh, Renee. We're going to do some for Renee. I think that's the last one, too. I think. So let's see. And if anybody else has a question or anything for me, please put it in the chat. Oh, Heidi's on, too. i got to get Heidi. Okay, so Renee and Heidi. If anybody has um, got a question about anything or a comment, want to tell me how this energy has been for you, if any sudden things are happening, unexpected things, I think we're going to see a few more of those as the week goes by. Okay, this is for Renee. Renee is from my beautiful yoga studio. No matter how hard I shuffle, the same cards keep coming up. So Renee, also, world at your feet. I put that in the middle because they just told me to. Something to do with a com competition or a battle that you've been really working in out in your life. Like I feel like it's like a, almost like, um, I feel like almost like gears grinding, like you can't get out of second gear, like something's keeping you stuck. I feel like you're in your last part of it. Like you're going to blow this apart. Like, and I don't mean that in a violent way. I mean, like you finally step into new energy from it. Really cool. A lot of balance. So keep, you know, I know you do yoga. So keep really balance in that because this last card, which I'm holding in my hand and I can't wait to show you is the justice card. And what that means is this conflict here, that's been really kind of eating away at you a little bit and been, you know, kind of keeping you stuck. The world and the universe shows you the justice, the way out. And for some reason, I'm compelled to um, reiterate what I was talking about in the beginning of the show, where sometimes we're afraid to make a change or we're afraid to take that step forward, or we listen to externals and it gives us anxiety. And as a result, we don't change. But we're allowing the fear to control us. And what we have to ask ourselves is this stuckness, this frame I'm like letting myself live in, is it true? Because we are always in control, but we allow the outside in instead of living inward, living from the inside out. I hope that makes sense because that's what I'm getting very strongly. All right. Um, Anita says the energy feels heavy. Yes, it does. Um, we are really in a lot of planets at their final degrees. And so this will feel heavy. Also, when we have a lot of Capricorn energy around, it can feel very heavy depending on what's in your chart. Um, but I feel like we're not over with the, um, the sudden ex unexpected things happening. I think we're going to have another couple of days of that. Um, I really, really do. Um, and, uh, the next one is Heidi because I missed Heidi, Heidi bronze. Okay. Heidi, this one's for you. Heidi, I hope you're feeling well. I feel like your vitality might be a little bit off. Um, I know I've been feeling that way lately because all of this is opposing, my, a lot of this is opposing my son, and so my vitality is a little weakened. As a matter of fact, this, uh, these transits are also opposing Joe Biden's son in his chart, so I wouldn't be surprised if we hear like a little bit of an episode or maybe something happens with his health, um, you know, and his vitality being a little bit uh, lessened. Okay, so this is for Heidi. Heidi, I got the Eight of Cups. The lovers upside down. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. And the wheel of fortune. I always think Pat Sajak when I hear that. Um, okay, so the eight of cups, um, Heidi, is an energy of walking away from something that's emotional. It's an energy of um, something that may appear abundant to people in the outside world or may look on paper like it's really good, but you just, you got to walk away from it. It's not good for you internally. Um, you can also see in this card, we've got the sun and the moon kind of, and that shows the ambivalence. It's bittersweet. It's, it's a little bit of emotion and a little bit of grief walking away from it. But you know, when you do that, the world is going to open up for you and the light's going to shine. The lovers. This does not always mean actual lovers. It can be a partnership. It can be a romantic partnership or another kind of partnership. But a lot of times when the lovers card comes in, what it really means, if we look at this card, 
is there's interference. We have two people. This symbolizes Adam and Eve, actually. And we have this energy here in the mountains in between them. It's, it's, a, it's a sign of interference in a partnership. It could be a friendship. It could be lovers. It could be, you know, a, a busy buddy, buddy and mother-in-law or, or a family member. But this is interference in a relationship of some kind. And then we have this beautiful Wheel of Fortune here. And what the Wheel of Fortune tells us is basically what we've been saying on this show, that we are in control. We make the rules. We um, are in charge of our own fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is also going inside to understand what our true desire and true nature wants from us. Sometimes we get in these situations where we have to walk away from something emotional because we're not really tapping into our desires. We're tapping into what we think we should do. And so that's, um, that's kind of what the reading is. So don't be afraid to move forward, even though it may be bittersweet for you. Um, you need to get rid of whatever is interfering in, in, in your environment or your mindset and go forward and, and find the fortune in the world. Find what really awaits you. Th this is also a card of blessings waiting for you to come. It's like the blessings are out there and you have to walk towards them. Okay. So that's the cards for tonight. I want to just look at the comments, see what we're talking about here. Um, Sarah says some unexpected things happened this weekend. Um, Cheryl says she's been busy. Just reading comments. Abundance for that reading. Oh, I love you, Elaine. We have to get together. And even if it's on Zoom, um, Anita smiled. Yeah, Anita, I think the heaviness may be um, the... Um, the full moon in uh, Capricorn, I definitely think that's and the, with the Pluto there, that's a lot of heavy energy for us. Um, Aaron is asking if a sudden can be good, and it can absolutely. Um, was ca Aaron and I were messaging this weekend, and um, just because something happens unexpectedly doesn't mean it's a detriment. And also, even when something happens and it seems like a detriment, in the long run, these planets that are in play now Pluto, Uranus, Mars. Mars wants us to take action. Uranus is the great awakener. Uranus wants us to let it drive the car. It wants us to relinquish and surrender and know that the universe always has our back and is much more wise and loving than we can imagine. Um, it's our own fear that will manifest something in a detriment. And Pluto especially is a, is a planet of transformation, and that's what this is all about. I mean, it was very shocking to watch that assassination attempt, but at the end of the day... It definitely brought the world together a little bit. So there's some always some beauty in whatever is repulsive. That's that scorpionic kind of uh, um, archetype. So, um, yeah, Biden health, I see that psychically and in the astrology. Um, and I also agree, and Elaine is agreeing with me, um, this week's is a little bit rocky energy. You know, lay low, inward, you know, live from the inside out. Don't let the outside in. You know, um, I also, on next week's show, I'm going to talk about, I'm actually writing a blog about it now, um, talk about, we're going to talk on the next week's show about the difference between entanglement or involvement and commitment. Because these days it's really popular to get involved, but we all have to be committed. And that's going to be a really good show. I'm going to show you also the archetypes with the planets with that. So I want to thank everybody for tuning into the Soul Space. Um, Lately, this energy in this particular Monday night at 7 o'clock for all of us has been extra special for me. I have recommitted to a lot of my own spiritual work and, you know, shining my light in the world and bringing my beautiful Leo North Node into the embodiment of my life. And I hope that you all, too, are really discovering and finding your own soul space. And we're doing it together in Zenkuda, which is living to our full potential. And I will see you back here next Monday night at 7. In the meantime... Check out my Zenkuda YouTube for some more videos, and I'll be on from time to time posting on social too. Have a great night, everybody. I love you.